Good morning, good morning. What a lovely morning. It's April and it's been sunny, but it's now gone grey and windy again. Although the rain has stopped. I hope you're well. Oh, There's seven hours of gardening at the weekend. Oh my God, that tree, which I thought was dead, is alive. It's alive. And it says road ahead closed, which is not good. So I'm going to go the other way. There we are, look, they get a good shot of my lovely house there. There's a nicely trimmed hedge, two big yew tree in the front. Eucalyptus tree, which is massive, probably the biggest tree in the area. Old post box. So, that's my field on the left, you can't see it. I just come to the end of it now. I've always got this saying that if you're not in third gear by the time you get to the end of your property, then your property is too small. Anyway, enough of that. What can I tell you about today? Okay, we've had new depths. We have plumbed new depths in the National Health Service. Now remember the idea is that it doesn't matter how low the NHS gets, there's always a new level. It's like the diving bell going down to the Titanic. There's, um, we're not even, we're still we're in the dark zone now where there's no daylight, but we're nowhere near the seabed. And to prove that, I had a guy come in, nice young lad, he's <laughs> had a few root treatments done on the NHS and then inevitably lost the teeth. So they've been paid for the root treatment and the extraction. So he's got a few uh, missing teeth dotted around. This lower six that he's got missing, he's not that bothered about. He's upper six, he's not that bothered about, but he's got an upper right five, which is missing. Four, a four, that's right. And um, so he decided he didn't want an upper right four missing, so he decided to have a bridge. And asked the NHS dentist to do him a bridge. And, and what they've done, I'm sure I know what they've done. I, I mean, I'm supposing all this. Those flowers are nice, aren't they? Um, I'm supposing what he's done is the dentist has looked at this upper right four gap and thought, I know, I can put a Maryland adhesive bridge in there. All I need to do is take an impression, send it off to the lab, not even probably an opposing impression. 15 minutes, bosh bosh, no local anaesthetic, and uh, tick a box, claim me bridge money. And I would imagine what they've done is they've done a single, a cantilever Maryland bridge. They probably cantilevered it off his five or something um, without putting it on his three. And I can say that because he's got, um, there's no clearance between the lower three and the upper three. So the, there are two alternatives. One is that the, they did put a, a, a wing a butterfly wing, as they call them now, on the on the three in Blatel, and the uh, premature contact on the lower three caused it the seal to fail and the and the bridge de bond. But he didn't mention that when they put it in, it felt too big or anything. So I can imagine what happened was they it didn't have a wing on the three, and then <clears throat> the other. Uh, The other thing is that, um, yeah, so, the, and also they haven't uh, paralleled up the palatal service of the four. So really I'd imagine the wing, if it was uh, confined to the uh, buckle, the tip of the buckle convexity on the palatal surface of the four was pretty small. And there's no uh, lock drilled into the four. So there was no lock to prevent the wing uh, displacing. Um, immediately so 
uh, wherever towards the middle of the palette, wherever that is. So anyway, this won't mean anything to you unless you're a dentist, so don't worry. But basically what they've done is they put something in, quick, cheap and cheerful, and uh, to get the money. Now this bridge has lasted precisely a week. He said it starts to get loose and then, uh, I mean, and when the Maryland bridges get loose, I mean, the only reason why they're, they feel loose is that they're, they're actually deep bonded, but they just haven't fallen out yet. They don't get loose, loose. There's no intermediate state. They're either properly bonded or they're, they're debonded. And so it debonded, but probably the glue just jammed it in position for a week until it fell out. Anyway, he took it back and uh, said that, you know, the bridge had fallen out. Now, the way people complain, especially young people, are not very well versed in the art of being, you know, a bit, a bit aggressive in their rights. Is that they just go back and say, look, this bridge you did for me, it's fallen out. They don't say, this is a fine state of affairs. I paid you 400 quid for uh, this bridge, which we'll come back to later. And uh, and it's only lasted a week, you know, this is what, what sort of dentist are you? They don't do that. Oh, hello. Evil Van, Evil, ne Evil, what's his name? Evil Neville has <laughs> been reincarnated in a, in a car in East Kent. Yeah, so they just say oh, it's fallen out. So the dentist has uh, said to him, well, uh, what you need to do is you need to go and see a private dentist. In other words, sort of implying that you, you, you need to go and get it done properly. by someone who's got the time and the resources and the skills to uh, do a proper job. So, and of course by then they've got their money, haven't they? So they've got no, there's no money in it for them in, in repairing the, uh, the bridge, which is what they're obliged to do. So, <clears throat> anyway, so he comes to me with this story and also, as I say, we'll come back to the from the money point of view, he's paid uh, 400, 400 pounds really for the bridge, which is far more than the maximum charge on the NHS, which at the moment is 319 pounds. And the way that it seems to me he's done this is because they've charged him uh, band one, and then they've also charged him band two, and they've also charged him band three. So whereas it says quite clearly, and we all know as dentists, that uh, if you have band three treatment, then it includes everything that's in band one or band two. Although it doesn't seem to make it that clear. It does, if you read it properly on the, how much you know does NHS dental treatment cost on the Department of Health webpage, it does say um, if you need treatment in higher bands, then you only need to pay the charge appropriate to the highest band. But what it should do is it should say that treatment in higher bands, and when it lists the treatment, it says, and including, it should say including any treatment that might have fallen into a lower band. Uh, including, you know, so like band two, it should say, band two, these are the treatments, fillings, etc., plus any, all band one treatment is included in band two. And band three, it should say all band one and band two treatments included in band three. But it doesn't put it as clearly as that. And in fact, that's the least of his worries. But seeing as I'm going to charge him, I don't know, 12, 1300 quid uh, to do this, um, it's only fair that I think that I try and steer him towards recovering the cost of this NHS bridge, but not least because it only lasted a week. And he's been overcharged, you know. I mean, here's a guy who uh, and and this is this annoys me because we had one woman who we did not in a career spanning nearly fifty years. Uh, we had took some bite wings of one woman and uh, missed um, uh, some decay off one filling, one to she had a tooth decayed and we missed it off her treatment plan. But for that, she got 8,000 pounds. 
and you know because not because that's in any way related to what that mistake was worth but because because that's the cost of defending it and bearing in mind that you know there, there's probably no reasonable defense other than human error um, apparently you're supposed to operate for 40 years without any human error and so um, so my indemnifier said look you know we'll give them eight grand and they'll go away and so I'm like well alright I'm not paying it you know, I am indirectly in fact the woman who got the monies is paying it indirectly because as a patient I mean where do they think we get the money from I only get the money from the patients so so the rest of her, her peers paid for it really and then, and then you get someone like this NHS dentist who's doing crap work, poorly planned, poorly designed, poorly executed, uh, and, then, and then, you know, has got the absolute effrontery to say to the patient, right, well, why don't you get it done properly on the, on privately? Um, And, and they'll get they, they'll get off scot-free you know that that's all sort of, and that, believe me that's not just an isolated case of uh, underperformance that that will be a pattern that'll be a uh, something that's going on all day every day at that place um, and they'll get the worst penalty they'll get is just to refund the, the 400 quid they've overcharged him There'll be no investigation into whether or not they're routinely overcharging. There'll be no investigation as to uh, why they haven't done the repair. And pushback from the patients is not sufficient to remediate or rectify that sort of uh, underperformance. You know, you need to. You need to have a dental reference officer, an old-style dental reference officer. And I won't go into how that system worked, but needless to, you know, suffice to say that it was effective. Uh, but when, when the government is, you know, when the system produces such poor results, you do not want an inspectorate that, that highlights the, the state of the service you know, having an, having an inefficient service, NHS service, that's failing and collapsing, goes hand in hand with abolishing the inspectorate so that uh, you, you know, you don't get the feedback and the criticism that you deserve. Anyway, we've given him a quote and he needs it done instantly because he's going away in a month's time. So we've had to book him in at short notice and so what I'll need to do is what annoyed the NHS dentist so much that they didn't bother doing it, which is I'll need to do some reduction on the um, latest service of his upper nine. Then I'll have to do some paralleling on his five and, and drill a lock majorly, um, tell him that he'll have a little bit of metal visible. Yeah, it's either that or an implant. I mean, an implant is... Um, two and a half grand isn't it probably if you include the crown and then that's not uh, that's not going to get dumped before he goes on holiday anyway so we've got to, still got no receptionists because of this ridiculous requirement to give four weeks notice which I don't know Let's just let this idiot overtake me. There he goes. So what happens is if you, you need to recruit a receptionist, and let's say you need one from 1st of February, and uh, she'll tell you that she can only come and work for you from the 1st of March, because she's got this requirement to give her previous employer four weeks notice. Well, I mean, in the old days, employees would just walk out you know they would just uh, they wouldn't worry about what what's going to happen to them if they don't I don't know whether it's because people are just more regimented and more uh, inclined to do, do what they feel that they've signed up for but 
you know, the argument goes that if they if you give them four weeks' notice, then at least it gives you a chance to recruit someone else, I suppose, to replace them. But whether or not you want a disgruntled or dissatisfied employee working for you for four weeks after they've already decided that they've, they've had enough and they're going to sling their hook, I wouldn't know. If someone gives me notice, I'd rather well, they left straight away, you know. The, um, the reason why they're frightened of just saying, you know, of walking away is that um, I mean, technically if the guy has to get a locum in to cover them and they're contractually obliged to give four weeks notice, then they might have to pay for the locum. But bearing in mind that, you know, if they're not drawing a salary, then uh, they don't have to pay for the whole of the locum. They only have to pay for what the locum costs over and above what they would have cost anyway. But even that, I suppose, is impossible, isn't it, for a nurse? Even the threat of that, it's impossible to resist the threat of that for a nurse. So that's why they um, all work the four weeks notice. But it does mean that we've been without a receptionist for about six weeks, which is the time between the last one handing her key in and the, uh, and the time it took to do the interviews and then, and then the four weeks notice. So she's starting next Monday anyway. So we'll have to wait and see how long she lasts. It has been difficult though, because, uh, you know, although reception work is not particularly onerous um, what we've been doing the dentistry and to a certain extent having to do the lab work and then also having to do take a turn at rescheduling appointments and sending out invoices and stuff like that it can all it soon gets pretty uh, you know it's just not enough hours in the day plus you know you have to leave say at four o'clock because you've got a, somebody's birthday party and you have to go and get jelly and ice cream, etc. Oh, it's round about was supposed to be finished by December. It's now April and it still isn't finished. There's some new houses on the left here now, which have finally been put up for the first the first few of them anyway to sell. Apparently they're nice. They're in the three, four hundred thousand pound range. And now and now we've got a three-way signal. The bane of the motorist, the three-way signal. Yeah, so. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love my family, I love my grandchildren. I don't mind at all leaving work early if it's one of them's birthday. But I've got two people who are waiting for trains and uh, they've already had to wait like two weeks because of the Easter holidays. These are more houses on the left going up. Hooray! The great god of three-way controls has let me through. But then uh, what's happened is that uh, my daughter's staying overnight. So she's staying at home today. But because I didn't get any notice of that, I'm working today, so I'm not gonna be there. And then she's staying for dinner tonight. And then my other daughter's coming over for dinner tonight. So I, I won't be able to stay late at work tonight and do the try-ins. These are all more houses on the left. Oh, and there's some more houses on the left further down the road there. And these are some more houses on the right, on the corner. Don't let anybody tell you that they're not building houses. Around here, they're not, they're doing anything else. There will be nothing but houses. I'm going to be in the middle of a new, a new town by the time I finished. Ugh. 
and when we come around the corner you'll see some more new houses around the back or flats anyway there we are look at that well once there used to be green open space which could have been a park or something no big old flats that are gonna block out the sunlight and overlook the back of the surgery all right I'm gonna try and upload some of these videos because they're backing up a bit I think they're back up to the end of last year now so if you're seeing this there might be another six to watch or you might have watched another six all right nice to see you hope you have a good day bye